And lastly, for our last speaker, we are moving from a global aspect on financing to Thailand. Uh, we have the former Deputy Minister of Education of Thailand and of the Turkit Bandit University here in Bangkok, Thailand. Let me invite Dr. Watrakon Samgosetka. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I realize that uh, talking in front of hungry people is very dangerous things. So I'll be brief, be short. It won't take long, just like Henry VIII said to his wife. First of all, welcome to uh, Thailand, and I hope you have a nice day. And please do a lot of shopping to help our economy. <laughs> I start uh, by uh, saying that uh, my presentation will be confined to only 20 minutes, as we all know that uh, lunch is uh, already uh, half an hour late. Uh, what I'm going to say is uh, the importance of John T and now school children, limitation of Thailand, consequences of inaction, innovation financing, and uh, an example of the, what they have done in Thailand at what they call Mehong Son model. Uh, I'd like to remind that the, the beginning started in Jom Thien Pattaya in Bangkok in 1990 when they started the uh, Education for All idea and then uh, in Dhaka in uh, 2000 they found out that they couldn't reach the goal so they include that into the Millennium Development Goal and uh, lastly at Incheon in Korea last year uh, and uh, they reached the global goal of uh, so -called sustainable development. As we all know, the number four is uh, quality education. There are 10 topics of them, and from 10, I select only three. That's uh, about free and equitable and quality primary and secondary education first, and uh, for quality early childhood development, and uh, thirdly, the relevant skill for employment. So uh, this is what is our, that's relevant to our interest here. Uh, next slide is, of course, everybody uh, familiar with this. Uh, we are interested in the stagnation of the, uh, this curve, you know, after 2007, and we have to do something about it. And for the definition of our school children, as we all know, uh, we are talking about uh, a student who enter but drop out. We are talking about a student who never enter school, and uh, thirdly, we will enter school later. So are uh, there three kind of kids. And if we uh, visualize in terms of uh, visible, in, in, invisible kids, we will see that uh, we have um, first on your left, invisible, yeah, those who never enter school, and we don't know how many are there. What they call the unknown unknowns, I would say. And uh, on your right, uh, those enter school and drop out. And your uh, southwest corner is a drop out who are still enrolled in the name. And lastly, on your uh, southeast, it's uh, those who uh, out of the school, you know, those are invisible. And right in the middle are those visible, OOSC, as we all talk about in this morning. Look at the figure of Thailand. Uh, Thailand uh, in 2009, there are about uh, 600,000 uh, school children and dropped out to only half of them, and 200,000 in 2013. So this is the figure that we are concentrating on at the moment. Uh, look at where Thailand is at the moment. You can see that uh, the figure that on the number is about uh, 200,000, and the rate of percentage of uh, our school children is uh, uh, lower than Indonesia and still higher than our neighbors on our left. Uh, next, I'd like to say something about limitation of uh, tra traditional education expenditure that we think uh, cannot solve the problem 
uh, and they cannot solve the problem out of school children unless we have something more innovative. Uh, look at these figures. You see that uh, in 10 years, uh, the budget on education nearly double. Uh, education is the biggest sector in Thailand, even bigger than Ministry of, De Minister, uh, Ministry of Defense. And it's growing up at something like 8% a year, while economic growth is growing something like 3% a year. So it's very clearly that it's not sustainable. We cannot pay education at this rate unless we do something on reform on what we have paid to uh, for education as soon as possible. Now, one innovation that has already been undertaken uh, by the QLF, that's the uh, Quality Learning Foundation, uh, which is a sponsor, uh, which uh, so helped me a great deal in presenting and giving you information. And I had to thank you, the QLF, Dr. Krayut Patrawat and uh, Dr. Supakon. This is uh, quality organizations. Uh, this organization, in cooperation with Thammasat University, where I worked for 25 years, uh, produced what they call Thailand Education Account. It's a kind of pilot. It is interesting to know that how much resources have been put into certain sector of education. As we all know, education does incur costs from the government only. It could cost from household, from private sector, and from social court as well. So with this kind of method, you can see clearly how much uh, you have to spend on one student to achieve certain level. And uh, as you see a little bit of uh, figure here, uh, we try to spend something to help eradicate uh, kids, needy kids, something like this. Uh, 0 0.5 of the, the whole budget. According to the national uh, accounting, uh, national education accounting, as you can see, the student in the fifth quintile province will allocate on average only 5% 5, 5 more than the third quintile. The average spending expenditure per student is 45,000 baht, but uh, the richest provinces get something like 54, while the uh, the poor provinces get only 36,000 baht per student per year. And that's, as I know, happened to a lot of uh, Asian countries and uh, many developing countries. The richest get more and the, the needy get less. So we have, we have to do something about that. Um, the limitation for traditional budgeting process, as you can see, uh, we cannot use the expenditure for out of school children, just like a shotgun. We don't like shotgun waiting as much as we don't like a shotgun approach to this kind of uh, out of school children. Uh, it has to be distributed, uh, focused on marginalized provinces and, and school, and uh, we have to uh, uh, spending uh, education to fill up the gap, or the poverty, poverty gap uh, wisely. In Thailand, there is an attempt to help a needy student by a very uh, strange method. Due to the lack of the data on needy student, so the Ministry of Education distributes something uh, of subsidy to each school. 30% of the whole school, regardless of whether they are school in urban or rural, say 100 students, so 30 students we allotted what they call the subsidy for needy student, and we pay a certain fixed amount per head student, like 1,000 baht per primary school. So our 30, they get something like 30,000. And no matter how many poor kids they are in that school, they have to be distributed under that quota. But for big school, rich school in the urban area, they would get a lot of money distributed to various students. And uh, they don't use kind of mean test for the family income. They use a self-report asking uh, the parents to fill in the form whether they are 
they have income, the household income less than 40,000 baht a year or not. So as you can guess, our parents answer by saying that they are below 40,000 baht a year. So this is the very serious problem of the lack of data system, which I mentioned later. Okay, the question is, what happens if we do nothing on 300,000 kids out of school? According to Dr. Burnett, has computed that uh, each year uh, will, it will cost Thailand something like uh, 10 billion US dollars a year, or 330,000 million baht a year. Personal cost, opportunity cost, and all the things. And secondly, it would uh, help worsen the condition uh, of the social and economic inequality inequality in this country. A low educated population tends to have lower life expectancy, as we all know, and prone to addiction to drug and alcohol, and a limited social mobility. Education is uh, very important in this country. Regardless of uh, your races, regardless of your religions, you can go up anywhere in private or public sector through education. So if these kids are out of school, there's no chance for them for mobility in life. And uh, definitely, what we're talking about, we're talking about the productivities. With 300,000 students out of school, definitely they weaken our productivity in the country, and we're trying to escape from uh, 5,400 baht, uh, US dollars per year to get to middle income country of 12,000. We try very hard, but still we 10 years pass and we still get stuck with something below 6,000, while our neighbor go up to 12,000 US dollars a year already. Even in countries like Thailand with relative high net enrollment rates, the significant loss of GDP due to the our school children is something like one to three percent of GDP each year if you don't do anything. And non-participation in education we saw in significant economic wastage, preventing developing countries like Thailand from reaching their full pot economic potential. We put up a graph, just like in economic class. As you can see, if do, we do nothing at all, that is uh, with current OCCC, we get up the middle. We reach the middle-income country in 2050. That is 35 years from now. But if you do something about the out of school children, we could get out of the what they call the uh, middle-income country trap, reaching 12,000 US dollars a year by the year 2030. This means if you do nothing about 300,000 out of kids, our school kids, that means we will delay by 20 years getting to the low middle income country. Each year we miss something like one to three economic growth due to the 300,000 our school children. Now, why would we need innovative financing? Oh, I don't have to say that very much. Dr. Burnett has uh, explained it very well. We need to be more targeting to the, these kids at risk, poor and marginalized children should be progressively prioritized, more efficient policy instrument to help identify at risk students, and new source education financing, and as you can see, we need some kind of uh, innovative things. So uh, the QLF has a sponsor uh, a report on growth experience policy for consideration of innovative financing. Uh, there are a few examples, as you can see here. The Philippines, uh, they contribute something like 30% of the revenue from lotteries to education. Uh, and uh, Vietnam, too, something of the a certain amount of taxes paid to uh, revenue. Uh, since financing consists of two sides, the tax or revenue and expenditure, the two sides of the same coins, as you can see, many countries have done various things. India, they contribute a certain amount of tax revenue, you know, from cigarettes, from cons alcoholic consumption, 
and South Korea as well. In Thailand, uh, uh, we collect what they call a syntax a surcharge on syntax 2% and put it up for education. And QLF is a recipient of that, uh, that part of the money too. However, in Thailand, uh, the earmark tax seems to be uh, a dirty word. People seem to think that earmark tax put a burden on people and it's contributed to the lack of fiscal disciplines. As a teacher of uh, public finance for so many years, I can say that fiscal discipline doesn't mean that the revenue has to go to only the government and distribute the revenue letter. It means that you spend money wisely. The efficacy of spending is very good. And you collect tax fairly. Once you collect tax, you keep it and you spend it efficiently. That's, that's the meaning of fiscal discipline. It doesn't mean that EMAC tax weaken the discipline, the fiscal discipline of Thailand. I mention this because I will propose later on here in our uh, way we're thinking. I'd like to mention the Global Partnership for Education, as we all know, the GPE funds. Uh, they need some help. 39 billion annual financing gap to help getting out of this problem, to get zero uh, of school children by the year 2030. Uh, the QLF, as I mentioned, uh, is already five years and have uh, initiated so many things. One project that I'd like to introduce is what they call the Mahong Son model. This uh, program has been initiated uh, three years ago, very successfully. Uh, they use the uh, information system from local government. They provide certain benefit package and they collect money from municipalities. As we all know, the uh, most important things about uh, getting uh, kids to school, giving them education, need kind of public and private partnership, particularly from local government. And here, they have 19 municipalities to have an agreement with the Ministry of Health and Ministry of Interior and KRF as well. And they collect information about uh, very poor kids and those with disabilities. And they put money only 50,000 baht a year. At altogether to come to 1 million and add 2 million from the government, as you can see. They sigh and they help and they put up the center from one center to four centers. As they share information from the figure that they usually, uh, uh, the figure come through the, 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 the government, uh, 372, but they found out there are 1,000 number of disabled children in Mehong Son province. And from the services of only 120, that could give services to 290. This is a high innovative public-private public, private, private partnership with uh, um, collaboration at the local government. Uh, in the next five years, they, they, they intend to provide 500 to 500 kids. Uh, before the program start, they have only 2 million bahts, and kids have to travel on average about 150 to 200 kilometers. But after the program, the, the budget go up to three million, one million from the municipalities, and the distance down to 30 to 50 kilometers to go and receive services. Now, the last part I'd like to mention is uh, to help uh, the situation in Thailand is a data system. You'd be surprised if you're informed that all kids in Thailand are registered for vaccination at birth, all of them. Our kids are registered with Ministry of Interior. Each has its own data system, but they are not linked, particularly not linked to Ministry of Education. So the number of kids, we know it correctly, only in May of each year. And through, during the year, 
many children move from one school to another, and there is no data system to track this system, to, to track the student. If we can coordinate the data, the data system, and since in Thailand, when kids six years old, they are given an ID card, we could put all the information in the cards, producing a kind of early warning system. You know that these kids need great attention. They are learning disability or in, in the great need of resources, and you can follow the track. This thing doesn't happen yet in the world internet. This is needed urgently. Secondly, in Thailand, politics and education. Altogether, there's something like nearly 400,000 teachers and personnel related to education in Thailand, covering uh, kids something like 9 million. And truly, it's a political aspect. If Thailand, if politics and education go together in Thailand, it wouldn't go very far. And bureaucracy, one problem of our country is the bureaucracy. Ministry of Education is a big bureaucracy. And we all know that bureaucracy begets regulation. And regulation begets delay. And regulation begets delay. And delay begets inefficiency. So we have to reduce bureaucracy as much as possible. Earmark tax, we can use a certain kind of earmark tax for a particular purpose, just like in many other countries. Particular purpose, just like our school kids' children. Maybe half a percent or one percent on surcharge of some uh, kind of good consumption related to our school kids. Decentralization and empowerment, as the Mehong Son model, as you know, the local government can cooperate, can, can collaborate, and produce resource. We can expect the central government to give directive and uh, do everything on behalf of the people, far away among the 67 million people. Monoculture, I'd like to mention this. Uh, we need diversity in thinking, diversity in occupation, diversity in degree. But uh, Ministry of Education uh, seem to um, have a, what I call monoculture. Overwhelming proportion of them have an education degree. They don't have uh, many engineers, ec uh, economists, or doctors, or whatever. So education is a very good degree. But for planning, you need other degrees as well. To look further, we diversify thinking, opinion, and vision. And uh, in Thailand, there's a particular aspect I'd like to mention. In the last 10 years, we have uh, so many Minister of Education. On average, we have every 10 months but one minister. It looks like they come from conveyor belt, you know. So the policy is not continuous, it's discontinued, depend on each minister. So all in all, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to end by saying that if you like to do something new, you have to think differently and do differently. And innovative financing is one of them. Like this gentleman has said, you know, insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. I'd like to end by saying this. These kids, our school kids, they don't realize that how much they are missing. They don't realize that they will not be able to generate income to support themselves in the future. They don't realize that they will miss happiness. They miss security. And they miss natural right that should be supported by government. And who realize what they miss are all the people in this room. So I think we are doing very good thing by helping these kids. And I thank you all on their behalf. Thank you very much.